Yo, 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 yo. So you decided not to listen to your wife, who specifically told you to save money and be more musically productive by sticking to Ableton Live and BSTs. But instead, you went out and bought a command station MP7 because you wanted hardware. And because you found this picture of Riza uh, sporting the MP7 and because it looks like uh, Barney designed it and, and because it's finally cheap enough for you to afford it. Well, you know what time it is. First, make sure your wife doesn't find out. Now it's time to fix all of the things that the previous wankster did while banging out beats on this thing. Oh yeah, except for those pads. You really can't fix those because they don't make them anymore and you can't find them anywhere. Okay, YouTube, so the first thing you want to look at, most of these old MP7s have really bad rotary encoders. They're very jumpy. They don't know which way to go. Kind of like your girlfriend when she don't want to listen to your dumbass. So what you can do is you can grab some of this contact cleaner here that I bought on Amazon. Please follow the referral link below. Just kidding. Do I sound like someone that knows how to make money online? Okay, no, but you, you spray some of this stuff in there real good, you know, get, get the bottom, get the top, make sure it gets all up in there nice and wet, and then you twist. You wanna exercise that encoder, work it out, work it out. You put it back on there, you scroll through the numbers, it goes one by one, no jumpiness. Pretty easy, right? What we got next is how to enter the agnostics mode. This is like for, for those people that don't believe in anything other than science. So what you do is you hold on to, to the left and right buttons and then you turn on the machine and then it'll go into diagnostic mode where you'll be able to test everything out. So one of the things that I like to test out on these when I get them is the buttons because a lot of the times the buttons don't work because they, they, they got banged on by the previous dude so much. And uh, So what I'm doing here is I'm using an iPad to, to make notes of which buttons don't work and as you can see, I found a few buttons that don't work. Yeah, actually, iPads are pretty good for some things, you know. Uh, they're not just good for like listening to, to, to music. You can use them to take notes too. So then, so then what, I, what I think you guys should do is get, get it all running again without, that, without, without the agnostic mode, because you don't want to trust all the agnostics, you know, just like you don't want to trust all the Catholics. And you want to fire it up and, and go over those buttons again. Make sure that they, they indeed don't work because we're going to be opening up this unit so that we can change those buttons. So test them out. Make sure that they don't work. In my case, I was able to find at least one that actually did work in the regular operation of the unit. All right, we're going to flip this baby over because it's time to open it up. Really dive in there in the guts of the, of the thing. And what I got to tell you guys, though, is that when I opened it up, I found something out and I'm not even going to have to repair the buttons because what happened is some of these cables sometimes get loose in there and they're not making good contact. So uh, it, it's called resetting the cables and all you got to do is go in there and plug and plug back in all the cables to reset them. So I didn't have to replace any of the buttons, but I'll still show you how you can replace the buttons in case that you need to do that. Okay, so I'm closing this thing up real quick. Now testing all the buttons, and whoa, 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 what do you know? All of the buttons work now, huh? So I don't have to replace any of the buttons. But I'm still gonna go ahead and show you something out right here. I got, I got coming up, how to fix a humming issue. The humming issue is a hum that comes from the headphone section only. And that comes from lack of contact in the case. So what you gotta do is you gotta clean the contacts in the case so that the humming can go away. Oh yeah, that's some good beats right there by by Emu. Oh yeah. Yeah, just work it in like that, like you know, like you're making that money, like you're getting that bread. Like my homie Cisco 3000 would say, like there's homework to be done. Like like my like my homeboy Bernie Sanders would say, I'm on that coffee. You see how how fast I be sanding that motherfucker. Uh, okay, okay, and, and right here I'm using my my trusty little contact cleaner again. Please, please buy it via the 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 link below. Just kidding, I don't have no link. You know, you know what I'm saying? Just wipe that baby down. 
making sure you get all up in there, yeah. The context, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay, this one right here is for all my techie people, all my all my engineers up in the hizzy. You gotta get that that copper wire, you know what I mean? Get a little bit of copper wire, we're gonna make some contacts right now. You're gonna be stripping that down, you know, make sure you get that nice and stripped. And then you're gonna, you're gonna cut little pieces and you put them right right where the contact goes, cause that, that copper, what it's gonna do is gonna, it's gonna allow for maximum transfusion of electricity, grounding sensations. So, so you just put them in there, you know, put a little bit of, of wire and then you close the whole thing back up. And guess what? You're gonna get the cleanest sound out of your headphones that you could ever possibly ask for. And I guarantee that you can come back and leave me a message if you don't. Okay, okay, so now I know we didn't have to replace any buttons, but I still wanna give you a few tips on what you can do if you need to replace them. First, what you wanna do is get a solder sucker. These things are about 10 to $20 on, on eBay or Amazon. And what you do is you squeeze that and, and when you let go, it'll suck the solder right out of your circuit board. This is an example of what the button looks like once you open it up and you take it out. It's gonna be on a circuit board like that. There's gonna be some pins in the back with solder. You put that thing, it's gonna be really hot, so be careful. You put it on there and then you squeeze it. You squeeze it and you let go. When you let go, it's gonna suck all that solder right out of there. <laughs> Then what you want to do is you want to take out that button. Once all the solder is out, you put in your new button, same place that you took it out. And then you're going to get a soldering iron so that you can really put that thing back on there. Make sure your soldering iron and your, and, and your solder is ready to go. Don't do what I'm doing, trying to hold everything with one hand. You won't need to do that because everything will be on the table. Then you just solder that thing back up. You should watch some. TV blog videos so that you can see a tutorial on how to solder. All right, all right, now we're gonna show you how to replace an LCD screen. Actually, I got this from one of our Facebook groups called Music Gear Display Retrofits. My homie, Eugene Mankowski, if you guys wanna go buy him a beer, he hooked it up with a tutorial on how to, how to change the screen. All you gotta do is just order it, you order a cable and you're good to go. Go check it out. Music Gear Display Retrofix on Facebook. Okay, okay, this is the best part of all, all of them because it's free. It's a firmware update. Yeah, you gotta make sure you're on that latest firmware, firmware 2.0. You gotta get yourself a, a USB to MIDI adapter. You gotta plug that thing back in there. Yeah, put it in the MIDI port and then you're gonna get ready to go. What you do is you make sure you, you, you load that up. You see it says 1.17. That's not good. You gotta be on that 2.0. We're gonna be using a tool called Emu Tools by my homie Ray Bellis. Ray Bellis sending a shout out. 2020, he running this website, y'all. Hell yeah, Bellis. You're looking good over there. Okay, you, you gotta make sure that when you go, you read all the stuff on there because these people are very smart and if you don't read something, then you, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Shit, shit, shit could explode and all that. So. Make sure you you do what it says. I had to do a, a, a upgrade before I did the real upgrade and uh, it all worked out really well in the end, but you just make sure that you do the CP10 if you have less than uh, 1.17 or something like that. Yeah, look at that MIDI. Look at that MIDI go, whoa. It, I also saw that it said downloading. It's like, I know this is old technology, but man, they used to download stuff back then. I thought I started, I was one of the first ones to ever download anything. And, and what's cool about this is that they also give credits to their homies, you know, like like this guy named uh, Alex Chang and like Huang Li and, and a bunch of other dudes. So that's pretty cool. Good job, Emu, with that prop given. All right, all right, and the last thing is a cool program editor, Pro Datum. You guys should really download this thing. It's pretty badass. It looks like a futuristic uh, VST panel or something. And uh, you might even be able to trick your wife into thinking that you actually stuck to VSTs and, and you didn't go buy this old emu rompler.